Welcome. My name is George Pearson, and I run the How To Gurus channel here on YouTube. Most of the videos in my channel are short demonstrations of the different tools and techniques you'll find in various software programs. Right now, I have several hundred of these quick videos available on YouTube. This video, though, is different. This is part of a new series of longer demonstrations that I'm doing to show you how to complete complex projects from start to finish using a variety of techniques and tools. All of the images I use in these projects are in the public domain and I've included a link to the pictures in the video description in case you want to work along using the same images. Okay, let's move on to the project. In this special Photoshop projects video, we're going to take a standard kind of picture here and remove a lot of unwanted stuff. You see the engine down here, part of the boat down here, this guy in the background. A lot of stuff that we don't need and we'll end up with a nice clean picture like that where we have cleaned up that background of all these excess pieces that we don't want to have in there. So it'll start like this and end up like that in this photography special. Okay, let's just close that out and let's take a look at this and analyze this picture a little bit. Let me just bring the size up here a bit. Just to zoom in a little bit. There we go. We can go a little further even, I think. That's pretty good. Now in this picture there are a few things. Of course, down here we have this big engine. That's easy to get rid of. We'll take care of that first. And then we have this little bit of the boat down here. Get rid of that. That's also easy to handle. We'll take care of that second. Just get those two things out of the way. That then leaves us with the tricky stuff. And there are some basic things and then some tricky stuff tricky parts to this. Getting rid of the stuff on the sky, that's that's not too bad. It's pretty easy. Getting rid of the stuff in the trees is a cinch. No problem there. When get rid of most of the guy, that's just clone stamp stuff. The problem, of course, is where he is in behind our main figure here. All this section down through here and up through here, that you know, all that, that's all pretty straightforward. The post is pretty straightforward as well, this fishing pole. No, not really a big deal in there. Where it's really tricky though is right up here, that little eye right there on the fishing pole, and where her hair is over his shirt. Those are the hard parts. We're going to be taking most of our time, at least most of our attention in here, on solving these. Solving that little bit right in there and solving that bit right there. And I have a couple of techniques to show you how to do this to make this work out better. Notice also this is from a JPEG photograph. You can see a little bit of JPEG artifacting in there on the edges of this stuff. That doesn't matter. That's just because of the compression on the image. That's not going to cause us any problems. So there we go. There is the problem that is set for us. Cleaning out the stuff in and around this girl out fishing and making a little bit nicer photograph. Okay, let's just see how we can start on this. The first thing I always do whenever I work on a picture like this is I make a copy of the background layer. I'll just grab the background up onto our new layer button like that, make a copy. I'll work on the copy. That way if I mess things up on this I can always come back to my background original image. We can also then compare when we're in there. Now starting off down here, let's do the easy stuff first just to kind of get things moving ahead and that's going to be this bit of boat right here and the bit of boat over there. I'm going to dock this picture like that so you can see the rest of our tools down below and we're going to start in here by doing some clone stamping. The clone stamp tool allows you to copy from one part of your picture and paste that copied to some place else. You can adjust your size right here and your opacity. You can choose different brushes all kinds of brushes in here you can choose from. We'll just be using just kind of a soft edge brush. You can see right there, when you're working this kind of clone stepping, soft edge is usually the best way to go. Opacity at 100 is what we want. Now, let's just minimize that down. You can see right there, there's, from the sky, there we go, there's the size of the brush. I want a much larger brush size than that. So let's click on the tool, it brings our options back up again. Let's bring the brush size up, and I'll just bring that up a bit. That's too big, too small. 
in there somewhere, I think. Big enough, but not too big for what we're going to be doing. Okay, and I'm just talking about the area down in here. So we're going to be copying some of this lake bit onto that, and some of this lake bit and some of that lake bit over into here. Okay, now to use the clone stamp tool, you hold the Alt key down, choose where you want to copy from, and click. Then move down. You can see it actually pulls that down. And we can see a little bit of that texture in there. And then just begin pasting over at that location. Now it's not an exact match in there as you can see. So I'm going to try a little different spot. Let's try right over here. Click and then I'll do that. That's a bit better. And then take some over here. Alt click and then I'll come down and we'll just kind of paint that out. Now luckily on a surface like this no one's going to pay any attention to the quality here of the water so this is pretty easy to do it's not really going to not really be showing any problems and they're not going to be looking very closely at that okay let's take care of the engine same thing i'm going to start right on this bit here click there and then i'll begin to paint in here now notice as i get over you can see the the plus side on the left side there that's where i'm copying from the circles where i'm copying to if I go too far, you can see that plus is getting closer and closer to that girl's figure. If I get too far, I would actually begin to clone her image over here on the right-hand side. I don't want to have that. Okay, it didn't quite give us a complete clone or hiding on this, so I'll copy some more and let's do another little batch in there. A bit of kind of a weird line here. Let me just do a little bit over that to kind of hide that. And there we go. So again, those are the easy parts just kind of losing that stuff. We can begin doing a little bit of cleanup on the figure. So we can just get an idea of what we want to do. I'll just copy again here. Alt click and I'll just clone stamp out a bit of the figure in there. Okay, I went too far on that one so let's just undo. So if you go too far you can just undo that stamp. A little bit right down there on the leg. That's good. Now I want to copy some of this stuff over into this area here, so that's fine. So I'll copy and pull it over so we have that same kind of texture that matches in there. Okay, that's about as far as I can take that. In the trees, of course, I'm going to be copying tree to tree. So I'll copy here and then clone stamp into there. Now, I can't go very far up or down, obviously, on these trees because I'm limited on my space. So I'm going to get as much as I can in here like that. Now there's a little bit of an odd bit on that tree right there so let's see if we can hide that. I'll copy from here. And this way you can actually see what you're bringing in. And it's going to change the skyline a little bit there. And we'll try to bring back a little bit of interest on that skyline just like that and get some variation on this I'm just trying to get so it doesn't look like I'm copying directly and that looks pretty good okay so we've gotten rid of most of that stuff we still need to work in this area here we need to work in up here I'm gonna copy just a little bit of the sky here and take out a little bit of his head just to get us in the right direction. Okay, that's about as far as I dare take this without doing an additional bit of work. Now, we need to come in here and create a protection for this figure and for that fishing pole and around up in here. So we can then clone out the rest of him and not worry about running over our figure. And we'll do that by using one of our selection tools making a selection marquee around the figure in the fishing pole and then inverting that. So we have new selection. I'm going to be using the polygonal lasso tool, my personal favorite. You can use whatever tool you're most comfortable with for this. Now for this to work well you want to really zoom in. I'm just come way in real tight here like that. I want a real real tight, very careful selection. Okay, let's get rid of that. And I'll start just off screen. And 
I'm just going to take my time and make a nice selection around this. Now I'm using a standard mouse on this, a standard wheel mouse. I'm not using a stylus or anything, so because of that, I can't get perfectly precise positioning. You can't do that with a mouse. It, it'll kind of jump left and right a little bit. So another reason to zoom in, the tighter I'm in, the more it minimizes any of that little mouse problem. And it does allow us to do a much better job. Okay, let's just begin to carefully work around here. And we're just going to create a very nice little mask around. So notice if I, if I roll off the edge there, the image scrolls. If I go too far, it scrolls too quickly. So I have to just be careful how much scrolling I'm doing. Just a little bit up like that. There we go. And try to get any little variations in there that you can. It, it's, it may take a little longer, may take more clicks in here to make this work, but it's worth the extra effort because it's those little changes in there that trick the eye and tell the eye that this was always on a clean background. The more complex it looks, the more the eye believes that it is naturally like that and it hasn't been changed or adjusted. The more unnatural it looks, the, the simpler it looks. Missed it a little bit right there, but I don't think that's going to be noticeable. So you want to have just a little bit of a nice, you know, a nice bit. Now we're coming up pretty close on that fishing pole. And that luckily actually is not that difficult because it's straight. The problem of course are the eyes on the fishing pole where the fishing line goes through. And almost up there. And we're going to save that for later. We're going to do that that one large eye and the hair as a last step on this whole process. And again, just take my time and going around. Now when you're using the polygonal lasso tool, don't click too quickly. If you click too fast, it's going to try to close out and finish off the path, and you don't want that. So take your time, wait a moment between each click. Okay, we're up to the fishing pole. Now it's straight, so I can take it straight up. I'm going to save this for later, so I'm just going to click out like this. And we'll come back and deal with that later. And then I'm back onto the fishing pole. And we'll just carefully go up along the edge here. Same thing here. This actually is okay. There's no problem on that. But there is this hat. So I want to come in here tight on those edges to try to be able to get rid of that hat. And come a little further in, I think. There we go, and just continue on up the fishing pole here. At this point, we really don't need to do anything else on this, but I'm going to go ahead and mask it anyway and do a little bit of cleanup on that edge while I'm at it. Okay, there's the top of the picture. So I can now come out and then come down the other side of the fishing pole. This side of course doesn't have any of those eyes to deal with. So it goes faster. You know much larger, much longer lines in here. Okay we're back down to the girl's shoulder at this point means we're almost done with our masking. So you know, it doesn't take that long. There's a little bit of time patience involved, but not that long really. Now again, on the hair, that's very complex. So we're going to save that for later. I'm going to take it right up where the hair is right here. And let's just come out like this. Do a big selection in there. And we'll leave that hair alone. Come right around there. We can actually get rid of that part of the other fisherman. 
okay at, at that point that's all we really need to do because we're only going to be working on that size so I'm just going to come down here and just finish off the rest of this in big strokes there we go Take straight on down to the bottom down here and then move over and we'll finish off you can see now why I started just off screen it's easier for me to find the beginning point click on that and I now have that nice selection at this point the girl is selected and what I want to have is the background selected so let's go up here to select first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to save this selection just in case I took some time on this so let's just save the selection in case we mess up on them we can always come back to that selection alright let's now invert this selection so select inverse we now have the background selected and you can see that if I scroll to the top up here there you go if you see that around the outer edge it means that that's the part that's selected Let's just come back and fit on screen so there we go all of this is now selected and the girl is protected now we can come back in use our clone stamp tools and get rid of the rest of this fisherman in here and again we'll just zoom in a bit like that let me back just a touch I think that's pretty good okay back to our clone stamp tool and I'll just take some stuff over here alt click pull about straight across and let's just get rid of the fisherman into the water pretty pretty nicely there that's good now up here we're just hitting the tree line right there it looks like I'm actually in the right location for that so that worked out well notice I'm off the screen here though I'm off my picture so let's go over here alt click let's bring that coastline back in line that coast up and then take out that figure that's a little bit of this same coloration right there I don't want to have that so I'm going to grab from over here and let's try to just kind of tap that in to lose that little bit that looks pretty good okay I'm using the wheel right now on the mouse just kind of roll this up let's grab some of our tree line here bring our tree line to match like that and they're up into the sky and we can now work out the rest of that. Now, sky is pretty even in here. So we should be okay. And there we go. We've gotten rid of that fisherman. Now I'm going to take a little bit more of the sky here and just kind of go over the edge of that fishing pole. And that will clean out some of that little JPEG artifacts in there. I went a little too far right down there. Let me just undo that. Let's try that again and just not come down quite so far. and went too far that little bit up there I don't want to actually lose that top eye up there either okay there we are so we now have that all cleaned out we can deselect that and if we zoom out let's just fit on screen everything's taken care of now except for that one spot there right there and that spot around the hair so let's go back and fix those two spots to finish this picture off we'll start by zooming in there we go zoom tool and let's zoom way in notice how nice and clean the edge of that fishing pole looks now that we have clone stamped over that edge there are a few ways to approach this I could use the polygonal lasso tool and just carefully come in here and take the time to go around and clean up that edge that's one approach I'll probably use that for this section up here but this area here is an ellipse that means that I can use my ellipse tool up here and let's make an ellipse around that now the way to, to do this is to first pull in some guidelines just like this so they're touching the four sides of the ellipse now it's not the right angle we'll be making a straight up and down ellipse so this will get us real close go over here to the elliptical tool elliptical marquee 
you know, using the guidelines, just draw corner to corner. And that gives us an ellipse that's just about what we want. And let's just clear those guides out. We're done with that. I'm going to zoom in just a touch. Here we go. We now need to change this, modify this selection. So I'll go back up here to Select, Transform Selection. And let's kind of play around with this. I need to rotate that selection a little bit and squeeze our sides in. And I'm just taking this and trying to get just the right size and right position to line up with the outer edge of that eye on this fishing pole. You don't need to be exact. This is going to look great anyway, even if it's not quite perfect. No one will be able to spot that it isn't exactly perfect. So we're just getting in here relatively close. There we go. I'll choose that. Now this is selected. The outside is hidden. So I want to invert my selection. Select inverse. The outside is now selected. We can see that again by going up to the top of the picture. There's that little selection marching ants thing showing. So we're okay. So now I can clone stamp around here. I'm gonna leave that area up there alone. So clone stamp, way too large as you can see there. Let's bring the size of our brush down. A long ways, that's pretty good. Okay, Alt click out here, and I'll just come in around and we'll clean up that edge. I'll take it just about that far. We can finish off the rest of that with the polygonal lasso tool. Okay, pretty good. Now we need to get the inside cleaned up. And let's do that again by modifying our selection transform selection. Actually, I need to let's cancel. I need to invert my selection first. Inverse, there we go. And now transform our selection. And I'm going to pull it in until it matches the inside of that elliptical area. just like that. Now this time this inner area is selected, the outer area is protected and that's what I want at this point. I want to be able to paint inside and not mess up the outside area. Looks pretty good. Okay, I'll choose that alright. Clone stamp tool, come back out here again. Alt click and let's just do that in there. It takes care of the inside. Deselect that. Now let's finish off this area up here. We'll use the polygonal lasso tool and I'll make a very careful selection right around this area here, right up against the edge of that pole. So that's one side. Again, this area is selected. I can work in there. Same thing. Alt click. And then let's just clone stamp into there. Back to our polygonal lasso tool. We'll do this side this time. We'll start up here on the pole. Right there and come down a little bit. And then we'll work around this side. Same thing. Alt click and then clean that out. And then we'll just deselect that. There we go. Let's take a look at the other one. I think we're okay on this. Well, there's a bit of JPEG artifacting in there. As you can see that, I'm just going to freehand this one to save some time. But I want to change my brush. Let's change this to a hard brush. Maybe a five point hard brush. There we go. And again, hold the Alt key down, click, and just very carefully come in and let's just clean out a little bit of that junk around that. This is getting pretty faint up here on the picture. It's pretty small on the picture, so I'm not that concerned about this one. Nobody's really going to be looking at, at this bit. 
so I can freehand this one pretty safely. Okay, there we go. That looks good. Let's now fit on screen. So the fishing pole is taken care of. Let's now work on the hair. Now this is the trickiest part of this whole image is getting this hair done well. I'm going to again use the clone stamp tool and fairly small brush. Again this is the hard edge brush at this point and that's fine. Let's just do some real careful freehand clone stamping. So alt click and let me just come in just be pretty careful in here and just get a bit of the rough hair shape. You know, as close in as I can get on that. We only have to go that far. The hair is fine from there on up. And at this point, it's a little too, too large. I need a much smaller brush. So I click on the tool, bring our brush size, bring us all the way down to one point, maybe two points. There we go. You can also just type in the point over here if you want to. And click out here, alt click, and I'm now going to come in and just kind of pull out like that, trying to pull out following the same shape of the hair. That gives me that real kind of softness on that edge. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just want to give the effect of it kind of you know disappearing into the background. This is just part of the problem. Obviously we still have that bluish tint in there. We need to take care of that bluish tint as well. That's the you know the color of the guy's shirt. We don't want to have that in here causing us some problems. If you look up at the edges here, this is a pretty good imitation of what the edges of the hair are doing up there. So I'm using, using this almost like an eraser at this point. And just kind of erasing in. It doesn't matter if you actually lose some spots. It'll look, look more natural that way. And that looks pretty good. I think that will do the job as far as that goes. Now, I'm going to do just a little bit of a fix up here. And let's just soften this edge up. This is right up against his cap. So I just want to make it a little bit random in here. So we don't have, or I can't see an edge happening on that. So just a little bit more of a randomness to break that up. Okay, now notice up here that there's very little color. There's a little bit of sky color in there from the JPEG artifact. And we can ignore that. This has that weird purplish color in there. Let's fix that purplish color. Go over here and grab this tool right there, the sponge tool. Click on that you know, bottom right hand corner of the enhance section. Click on the sponge tool. You want desaturate and let's find a good brush size for that. About like that. And what this does is it pulls the color out. So I can use this and just pull that blue out of that hair, that kind of purpley blue color. And once that's gone, it's going to match the rest of the hair. Just a little bit along this edge because of course we, she was up against that blue color there as well. Now you don't even notice it down here. You may see a little bit of that coloration inside of the fishing pole here. So I'll use the same trick on the edge of the fishing pole and up here just to get rid of that bluish. I'm just taking all the color out. On this it's okay because it will be a, you know, a dark silver or black anyway. So no one's going to see that. So we remove that color. Looks good. We fixed the color on the hair now. That looks good. And let's see how we look. Let's go up to view, fit on screen, and there we go. That looks great. Let's see if we can enlarge this a bit. Fit on screen. Okay, I'll just zoom in 
a couple of notches here and there we are so the edge looks great that looks fine that looks perfect the hair looks perfect in here everything else of course was easy to do and there we go the last thing I might want to do is come back in to be a little more careful on the edge back here but I think we're fine in that let's take a look at this again let's fit on screen there we go so there is the original right down below here we go and there's our new repaired version here is the original and there's the repaired version you, you'd never know that there's a person in there behind her we just took that out mostly as you saw with the clone stamp tool and then being careful with our selections to protect areas little tricky stuff around the hair and around this and then desaturating with the sponge tool to remove any stray color in there which makes it then match the rest of the picture and there we go that is how to clean out objects that you don't want to have in your picture it's really a matter of protecting the areas you want to keep clean and then taking your time in hiding the areas that you don't want to be seen okay let's just answer a couple of questions in here on this one thing I don't know if you responded this or even thought about it but there is a fishing line in there there's that fishing line right there you can see it right here I didn't care about the fishing line up here because it's a white line against a light background and you would probably never see it anyway so I just ignored that there's a little bit of a fishing line in here as I zoom in a little bit of strangeness going on in here and a little bit of fishing line shown from the guy when we removed him we can clean that out and get a little more of our clone stamp tool stuff let's just come in here and find a good size for that there we are I want to go back to a soft brush most of the time when you're using a clone stamp tool you want to be working with a soft brush and not a hard brush okay let's just do a little quick cleanup in here alt key and then paste and just kind of get rid of those went a little too far on that one so when you when you finish off your picture make sure you come back in zoom in a little bit and see if there's anything strange happening in there where you've been doing your clone something that you want to kind of clean up there's a little bit of a tree line in the back a little, little faint tree line that looks like it's just kind of cloudy a little bit in here again we have just a touch of that fishing line showing easy to get rid of on these trees little spot there more fishing line stuff here and it's easy to miss these things if you don't go back in and take another look at your picture so it's always worth to worth it to double check when you're finished and then go back in and do a little a little final cleanup on your image just like that that looks good figures okay there's a little bit of line right in there I'm not gonna worry about that but well let's go ahead and do it make sure we cut touch everything here it's against the figure again so I want to make a quick selection it's right along that edge does need to be very big there we go that just protects that that edge clone stamp tool you can select outside of a selection and then paste in your selection there we go that easy deselect and let's zoom out just a bit here I'll use the menus and see what it is I'm doing instead of using those keyboard shortcuts keyboard shortcuts by the way are great they're over here on the right hand side great things to memorize and use it saves you a lot of time I'm just staying away from those in this video so you can see what what I'm doing the whole time Okay, we didn't do anything over here we did a little bit down here with that boat I don't see anything down there let's check over on the right hand side that looks fine so we've cleaned up everything looks great okay a couple of little things in here and that's just on that desaturation tool that I used in the hair here and over here it's a great tool to know about it does two things 
it either removes color or if you switch it here to saturate it adds in color or brightens up color. So this makes your color brighter and this makes your color darker. You can kind of consider this as as going towards a black and white and going towards a real high contrast color. You know, one or one or the other. But I found that frequently on this kind of photo editing, if you have any kind of color halo or anything happening, which frequently happens when you're doing these kind of selections, you may get a little bit of a color halo from something else. Coming in and desaturating that edge is a great way to solve that bit of a halo problem on there. Okay, so there we go. Just a few final thoughts on how to do this technique. Let me just bring that back out here, fit on screen. And there it is. We have removed and cleaned up the background on this fishing picture. Thank you for watching this special Photoshop photography project video. Don't forget to subscribe so that you will get first notice of new project videos in the future. Just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here. You can get all 12 project videos in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here. And then thank you again for watching this training video.